I first became involved with the issue of cults uh, out of a personal experience in 1983. Uh, my grandmother lived in a Jewish nursing home. She was in her 80s, and I would go visit her. And one time when I went to visit her to take her to lunch, she was very upset. And I asked her what she was upset about, and she told me that someone had been screaming at her in the nursing home, and that this person had said she was damned to hell, and that she was, uh, you know, an, a sinner, a bad person. And I, I asked her, I said, Grandma, you know, or as we say in Jewish, Bubby, I said, what, uh, how did this person get in here? How could they possibly be bothering you? This is a Jewish nursing home. And she explained to me that they were a member of the paid staff of the nursing home. That prompted me to investigate. And I found out that there was a particular group called Jewish Voice Broadcast, which is a group that targets uh, Jews for conversion to fundamentalist Christianity that had infiltrated the paid professional staff of the nursing home with the intent of proselytizing or recruiting. And I worked with the director of, of Kivel Nursing Home uh, in the 80s, and we rooted out those people that were on the staff that were affiliated with this group. They were terminated. And then I found myself in the role of a community organizer, an activist. I served on a number of committees uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, and then later in New York for the Union for Reform Judaism. And then I worked for a social service agency uh, and then I worked for an educational bureau also with the Jewish community. And so it really just kind of evolved from a personal experience to something that became unintentionally a career. Uh, my grandmother was never recruited. I mean, she was a devoutly committed Jew and, and had no intention of converting to another religion. The issue for me uh, was the idea that, first of all, a group could covertly infiltrate a Jewish nursing home with an, a, an ulterior agenda. And second, that no one had requested for them to come and share their ideas or their faith. I had no problem, by the way, with them coming through the front door on request. Uh, for example, someone saying, well, Mrs. Goldstein would like to do a Bible study with someone from the uh, ministry. I have no problem with that. It's the idea that they were surreptitiously and covertly infiltrating the paid staff of a Jewish nursing home with a hidden agenda that upset me. And quite frankly, it upset the larger uh, religious community in Phoenix, Arizona. And I was able to, under the umbrella of the Jewish Federation of Greater Phoenix, put together a brochure called What in God's Name was going, is Going On in Arizona, which was endorsed ecumenically by most of the major denominations of Arizona. And we came to a kind of consensus about what was ethical and reasonable in proselytizing, uh, that you should not uh, go where you are not wanted, uh, that you should not be stalking people in nursing homes or hospitals unrequested, and that families deserved respect, that you should not uh, try to uh, proselytize a minor child without parental notification and consent. So we, we came to a kind of consensus about that, and that then drew me to uh, national committee work and uh, agency work uh, for the Jewish community through the 80s.